great to be here. Oh God, I don't know if I can answer that. Uh, I've always listened to older music, though classic music, mm -hmm. and roots, and country, and blues, so I guess it's just been ingrained into me instead of the pop and the rock that you hear on the radio today. Uh, music was always something that was really steady in my life and both my parents, um, although they aren't musicians, they both listen to music. And uh, I grew up singing in choirs and mm -hmm. I went to an art school for high school and uh, decided, you know, songwriting something that I really wanna give a go and wow. put out the album. Well, I met my producer, Michael Johnston, uh, about three years ago, I guess, and we started talking about songwriting and he got me to bring in and show him a few of my songs and said, you know, I think this is something you should seriously consider. And I loved that idea and we started uh, just writing and talking about where we wanted this to go in what direction and I made a four song EP about a year and a half ago, uh, showcased at a couple music conferences, uh, gained enough momentum that I now went in to made the studio, make the studio album and uh, hired some incredible session musicians who are all veterans in the industry and came out with a really great product that I'm really happy with. Uh, having working with the band was great because they brought a whole new life into the songs. I'm normally a solo performer. Mm -hmm. I'm now starting to play more with the band, but so you know it just it gave it a new identity and I think probably the two songs that I think will do well or mm -hmm. that I have a special connection with are Don't Know How I Got Here which is the title or the first song on the album and uh, Ride Into the Sunset which is a bit of a duet with Lynn Miles and Justin Rutledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it would be a live album then. Mm -hmm. I really love going into the studio with the band and just getting everyone's input. So if it was solo, I think it would be a live one. Yeah, genre, I mean, it's a tricky question to a lot of songwriters especially because mm -hmm. no one likes to fit themselves in a box. Um, I tend to tell people I play Canadian music. You know, the states, they've got Americana and it's that just tradition of mm -hmm. music from the land and from the people and I think we should really have a Canadiana genre and just that rootsy country folk kind of genre, you know, that most singer-songwriters fit into. I hope it gets filed days. under country or alt-country. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of peers in that file genre. It as country with other influences, you know, right. alternative country, so it could be country rock, mm -hmm. country folk, country pop influences are just um, other Canadian roots singers, people, you know, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, and mm -hmm. then I also have the Graham Parsons influence and whatnot, but right. it's mainly the alt is the roots and the folk music of Canada and where we came from. Mm -hmm. Just, it was so natural. I've always been writing and I've always been singing. It was just, you know, something I did. It was like mm -hmm. breathing and it still is, except now I just make my career out of it. Right. Um, when I was eight, I probably would have been considering doing rodeo or something. I'm wow. a big rider, and before the music came along, I was going into training horses a lot more, and then I'd love to wow. ride, and uh, I'd go up to our cottage in the summer and mm -hmm. go on the trail rides there, and then started going to the summer camps and had my instructors telling me, you know, this is something you should seriously consider. Wow. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's still, it's an equal love to the songwriting, really. Country wasn't a big thing in my mm -hmm. house growing up. My parents really don't enjoy country music. Okay. And uh, I just got so curious and one day on the ranch I just asked someone, you know, if you were to only listen to one country artist, who would it be? And they said, well that's easy, it's either Hank Williams or Johnny Cash. Couldn't find Hank Williams at the time. Um, found Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. though. And having grown up with things like the Eagles and, you know, on the radio, you'd right. hear Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys and all those, the bubblegum pop. Exactly. Hearing 
lines like I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die just blew my mind you know I didn't know songs could be written like that right and it, it affected my perspective I think and it affected the type of music I listened to from there on mm -hmm. out you know I really started listening to older music people like Johnny Cash, Graham Parsons, Van Morrison yeah. and uh, yeah I probably wouldn't be where I am today I've slowly brainwashed my mother into <laughs> enjoying country and at least enjoying the music that my friends make in right. country. And yeah. I think I heard Danny Michelle once say, you know, people talk about punk rock being the music of the devil. Well, I think it's new country. You know, right. it's yeah. just, it's so far. Some of it is really mm -hmm. great, but some of it's just so far from what country was. Authenticity is very important to me. Truth is very important to me as a writer, you know. Every song I write, I tend to go through it and say, well, is this true to me, you know, am I really, do I really mean this, or is it just a line? Mm -hmm. And right. I think that's where you can get lost as a songwriter, by just putting in a lot of lines. It's a bit of a darker song, it's just about, you know, coming to a place in life and going, you know, I'm not sure how this happened. But, you know, I'm trying to figure it out, and uh, for me it's got a lot to do with um, some family situations in the past, that's why I wrote it, you know, it's, songwriting is very cathartic. Um, it's got a lot of Appalachian influences in it, that's how I started it, and uh, some great twangy guitar that uh, my guitarist John Dinsmore put nice. in, that's amazing. And. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's gotten a lot of good response from other writers. And yeah, it's just one of those truth songs again. They have been. I'm very grateful to CBC and particularly Matt Galloway on CBC One. He's mm -hmm. been giving me a lot of airplay, as have a lot of campus stations. So yeah, I'm very, very grateful to that. Uh, and it's not recognized as well as it should be. It's incredible music and the fact that it's not on all the radio stations and all this American music especially is, wow. you know. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, you know, especially with the record companies, we're in a very interesting place in the music industry right now. People talk about the collapse of CD sales right. and the collapse of the record company as we know it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot's going to change in the next 10 years, but I think it's that commercial appeal is still holding on. Absolutely. And the roots music, you know, it isn't always considered as commercial. Mm -hmm. And I think that may be one of the big factors. It'll be a great night. I've got a great band and some very In special guests. To, uh, I've got John Dinsmore, who played guitar on the album, is moving over to bass, and Gord Tuff, who played with people like Sarah Harmer and Kathleen Edwards, is going to take over the guitar. It's a great room, Hughes Room, if you don't know it. It's one of the few listening clubs left mm -hmm. in North America, mm -hmm. and uh, they also have dinner reservations as well, so great. it'll just be a really nice evening. If you want more information, you can head over to myspace.com slash Taylor Mitchell Band. Uh, the website is under construction, should be up in the next couple weeks. That's going to be taylormitchell.ca, and you can get all the info you need to know at one of those. Great. Beautiful.